So ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Sage. All right, first thing I'm going to ask you, why the name Sage? Uh, that's a little bit. Oh. Yep. Okay. And the meaning of it is it's a deep meaning. Uh, it's it's like a, a wise person, you know. A mom. Hello. Are you proud of this young man? Yeah. Okay. Um. I'm going to ask you to go into explaining. You told me what this is, and I love your take on it. So tell people about this picture that you bought with you. Uh, this is actually the Last Supper. Um, when the original picture was portrayed, it was portrayed at a dinner table, as in the Last Supper. But uh, coming from from my family and stuff. Whenever we have dinners, it's always not just dinner; it's always a congregation afterwards. You know, so this is like after, or in in my perspective, I don't I don't really go by. I mean, uh, everybody knows the Last Supper is a, a Bible story, you know, but I don't go by that. It, it's more or less a a, a a leader figure that's telling the other people that he, that he's around that. It is the time on earth is coming to an end. And um, so that's why the saddened looks. And you know, the, 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 the people that are in the story are still the same. But it's, I guess that's what changed. Uh, the colors, pretty much the black is for um, the sadness of everything. The white in everybody is for the unity, as well as the orange and the green. Um, and Pretty much the story behind it was that the leader figure told everybody that his time is coming to an end because of this one person right here. And that's the one person, his right hand man, that's looking, you know, away from him. But everybody else is looking towards him, you know, looking for, for guidance. But he's like, I don't have it here. I don't have it. He's at the end of me. So that's pretty much where it comes I'm going to tell you something that. <clears throat> Anybody who actually reads the word, reads the Bible, will understand. This is more scripturally accurate than the one that we actually know. If anybody didn't know that. I love the way that you actually have Judas Iscariot face because that was his position. And the looks of in each one, it is captured of the emotions that were displayed. And the fact that you connected it to your family, as anybody can see that, because who eats dinner and just be like, right? I mean, after the itis hit, you know you might. <laughs> but usually after that, that that truly, what made you do this on such a large scale? Uh, I like I like paper works. I mean, the uh, the textbook definition of the, the art that I do is abstract expressionism. And I don't feel that I can express myself on a smaller canvas, you know. So I, that's why I do the work. And also, if you count the number of people in the picture, it's, it's 13. It's not 12. I put myself in there. I'm the only one without the beard, though. <laughs> so, what actually inspires you when you start off? You say you like to work big. What makes you look at something and says, I'm going to work on that? Uh, it's, it really doesn't even start off as, as something I want to you know, like, think about to do. Uh, it's pretty much spur the moment. And um, that's how it is. But my process is usually I just uh, I start off, I don't, I don't really like buying canvases that are already stretched. I like putting my own my own work into it, my own time and effort into it. So I start off with a blank canvas and I might, it might sit there for a day or two. I'll just look at it and then I'll start off with some lining and then I'll just add colors and keep going with colors and colors and colors until I'm ready to outline it. And usually the black is the last thing I put on to bring it all together. So. A lot of people, the black is like their foundation. Yeah. That's what's up. The black is, it's, to me it's like, a, I mean, if we, when I was coming up, the cartoons and everything, it was like the black was the outline. Mm -hmm. so I 
felt like you would have to do the background or something before you did the outline. So that's where that comes from. Now, mother, if you don't mind interjecting, <laughs> what was he like honing his craft at home? Are you a sister? You can chime in if you feel like it also. <laughs> he, took, he took a lot of stuff apart to see how it worked, to put it back together again, much to the consternation of his parents. Um, but he was always, as a, as a baby, he was the most sensitive, like, you know, like, you know, when you hold a baby, Babies gently hold on to you. He would hold on to me and pat my back as I was patting his back. You know, he was he was he was a lot of comfort. He's a very creative person, and he's um, he does a lot of thinking. A lot goes on in here. So I think he was drawing. He used to um, break things up into squares and draw like. Uh, baseball players and football players and stuff like that, and then he started drawing his own um, his own characters, and that's played out in the toys that he's doing now, and his clouded minds and stuff. So, if if you look, well, you don't have the benefit of sitting there looking mm -hmm. through all this stuff, but you can see a progression, and this this is this is why I'm saying I'm beyond proud because he's doing something that. He should be doing. That's what you should do. Gosh, I wish my mother could figure it out. Now, you were, well, you were Hampton, what was it, weekend before last. Mm -hmm. Because I was really upset because I had just left the area where you were. Mm -hmm. After you posted, I had just left and was here to go to supper. Yeah. And that hurt my feelings, sad. No, that, hey, you're here today, that's all that matters. <laughs> you did a piece. It looked like it was like a light bulb, a twist, one of the twisted light bulbs. And what made you do that? Talk about the piece that I did there? Yes. Uh, like I said, it was just this pause for a moment. So, um, I, I had a couple of other pieces that were actually that same size and that same color. And um, I just went for it and it came out good. Yeah, everybody liked it. I, mean, uh, I liked it. I, I didn't even see the actual thing. Yeah, it wasn't really a, a, like a, a plan behind it. It never really is. I mean, I've been thinking about doing the Last Supper for a while, but I didn't know how I was going to do it. I just was like, Last Supper, my take on it. So, with all of this, all that your mother said, you know, you're, you're working on toys, mm -hmm. like action figures. Like vinyl toys. Vinyl toys. Not action figures okay. at it's all. It's like collectible, something yeah. to collect. You I, give it to I'm gonna, I, I collect toys, so yeah. just, that's why I got to ask. Cool. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I've been working on those for about, know, since the beginning of this year, early last year, um, with the whole planning of it and everything. And uh, come together. But they're not going to be like action figures and toys. Yeah, and not at all. So Something that's put inside of a shelf in a glass case. Just that's me. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Um, that piece of work that you were talking about um, that I did in Hampton about two or three weeks ago, uh, I actually ended up donating that to the Hampton Neighborhood Commission. So it's it's um, it's hanging up in the building that's to the left of the Crown Plaza. So. What's the main thing that you want people to leave, walk away when they see your work? What's the main thing you want them to walk away? So what, after you see my work, I think I really just want you to have enjoyed it, you know, and, and to take from it what you want to take from it. Um, because uh, I don't, this is the first piece that I've really done this, this defined, you know what I'm saying? Um, because the, the rest of my pieces is, is real abstract and it's really, uh, really broken apart. And every time I show somebody, they're like, man, I see this, is this what this is? And I'm like, nah, that's not what I thought, but if that's what you see. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if that's what 
that's what you see and that's what you want to see, then yeah, definitely, that's what it is. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty much what it's up. Um, I'm going to take anybody out here have a question for him? Anybody have a question? Mother, anything else you want to add? Um, I would just say, yeah, fabulous show. Um, and keep watching. Artists change on a dime. And if you don't keep track, you'll miss something. And then you'll be wondering how we got from A yeah. to F. Okay? So, just, just keep an eye on I got a question for you, man. Uh, what other styles of art do you do you uh, dive into besides what you were saying earlier, the uh, abstract expressionism? Like, do you do more than that, or are you looking into getting? Uh, I do a lot more. Um, so I do cartoonism, stuff like uh, cars, um, I also do. Abstract expressionism, uh, sculpture. Mm -hmm. um, I like acrylics, I don't like oil too much. Oil takes too long to dry. I'm not really a fan of that long drying process. Um, I usually don't even wait for it to dry properly. The next coat is another color. Um, so, uh, You've been inspired by any um, street artists? That's <laughs> one question. Cause, That's <laughs> cause definitely. Um, you, can, you can see that in my toys. You can see the, the real. Uh, the impression that he's left on my heart. Um, What's his name? Cause. Cause. K A W S. Uh, I think his name is Ryan something, but I don't know. He's been doing work on um, work since about the 90s, the early 90s. So that I do do stuff like Picasso, Cubism. Um, just getting into it though, so I'm really it. But that's pretty much my inspiration is Picasso. Uh, real quick, talk about your Facebook page and Instagram. Uh, my Facebook page is at Sage Art, and my Instagram page is at Sage the Artist. The website will be up soon. Will you be selling your work via the, the website? Um, I can't say that I will. I but you can't say know. you won't either. <laughs> I, I don't I, I don't think I will sell originals, but I will sell prints. Yeah, prints will be for sale. But uh, if if you want to buy something, it's upon request. You know, I don't. So you really, take okay. Yeah, I just I mean it, because once you put a money aspect and a price tag on everything, it's like man, I can't afford that. I don't, don't want to do that. So you know, it's <laughs> I'm gonna sit over here on that one. Yeah, I mean, I just don't like putting a price tag on anything. I like to discuss it with somebody and see what they can afford, and then we can go from there. Yeah, so. Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for Sage.